We are now bringing you a live telecast of the National Day Rally from the University Cultural Centre. Senior Minister of State Lawrence Wong, Minister of State Halima Yaakob and Minister Heng Sui Kiet will be delivering their speeches first. Prime Minister Lee Sien Lung will deliver his Malay, Mandarin and English speeches at 8pm. Ladies and gentlemen, the Prime Minister. Friends and fellow Singaporeans, a very good evening to you all. I've made a few changes to this year's National Day Rally format. First, the date is a little bit later than usual because I didn't want to clash with Hari Raya Idol Fitri. But secondly, and more significantly, I've changed the format. I've invited three of my younger cabinet colleagues to speak to you this evening, and I will speak to you after the break. Let me explain to you why I'm doing this. Singapore is in transition. Last year, I brought new ministers onto my team so that we'd have fresh people, fresh voices, and the best team to serve Singapore. Recently, I appointed Mr. Heng Sui Kiat to lead a group to take a fresh look at where we are going and what we need to change, to look beyond the immediate to the longer-term future, to engage Singaporeans in this national conversation. So Sui Kiat and the younger ministers are just getting started on this task, and tonight, I thought it would be useful to give Sui Kiat, Lawrence Wong and Halima Yaakob a chance to speak to you and to give you a chance to hear them. There will be others also who will be involved in this effort and maybe in future rallies, I will be able to invite them to speak to you too. But meanwhile, I'll sit in the audience for a change and hear the speeches. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. May we now invite Senior Minister of State, Ministry of Education and Ministry of Information, Communications and the Arts, Mr. Lawrence Wong to address us. Mr. Wong will be speaking in English and Mandarin. Mr. Wong, please. Prime Minister, colleagues, friends and fellow Singaporeans. On the 9th of August this year, I joined our youth at the Scape Youth Park to celebrate our nation's birthday. I missed out on the mass displays and fireworks at the parade. But there was just as much energy at the youth event, especially when our young Singaporeans all stood together to say the pledge and to reaffirm their commitment to the nation. The pledge resonates strongly with all of us. Maybe it's because we grew up reciting it in school. But at a basic level, it's an expression of our values and ideals. It's a promise that every Singaporean, whatever our race, language or religion, will strive to achieve happiness, prosperity, and progress for all. Singapore is still a work in progress, but we have come far in achieving these ideals. Tonight, I want to talk about achieving happiness by creating opportunities, enhancing the quality of life, and building strong communities. We have invested in our people and tried to give every child the best possible head start. 
Children today grow up with far more opportunities than their parents. In schools, they take part in many enrichment programs and activities in the arts, music, and sports. Some of you may know that I play the guitar. Or when I was in college, I used to go busking just to earn some extra money. But I had no formal lessons, and I had to learn how to play myself. I wish I were back in school, because at Bendemir Primary, all students are taught not only the guitar, but also the keyboard and the xylophone. I recently got the chance to catch the students in action. And as you can see, they are really enjoying themselves. One of them said that without this program in school, he would not have had the chance to learn a musical instrument. But now, he's discovered his love for music and has in turn become more confident. Beyond our schools, we are also doing more at the ITE, polytechnics and universities to develop the talents of each and every student. I've spoken to many young Singaporeans and I know they have a great desire to, en to attend university. So over the past few months, my colleagues and I have been looking at how we can expand university places for Singaporeans. We've heard you and we are taking action. We will launch new degree programs. They will have a strong applied focus and close links with industry. And the Prime Minister will elaborate on this later in his speech. A world-class education will enable our youth to achieve success in the global economy. But we are also looking to enhance the quality of life. That's why we are investing in the arts, culture and sports. These are important areas for us. They provide platforms for leisure, for expression and self-improvement. As a young student, this was back in the 80s, I used to read reports of Singapore being dull, boring and sterile. Perhaps some of you remember reading those reports too. Today, words like fun, hip and exciting are better used to describe us. We have an exciting calendar of arts and cultural performances and a full schedule of sports events for all to enjoy. The new Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth, or MCCY, will continue to build on this to further strengthen Singapore as a centre for the arts, culture and sports. This will not only enhance Singapore's dynamism, but also add colour and diversity to our lives. So I urge everyone to participate actively. Let me say a few words in Mandarin on the new ministry and some of its priorities. Good evening, fellow Singaporeans. The new Ministry of Culture, Community and Youth will be set up in November. One key priority will be to promote arts and culture. And in particular, the ministry will focus on traditional arts and ethnic culture. The Chinese community has been a tireless promoter of culture and arts over the years and has helped to build a vibrant arts scene. Through its efforts, the community has nurtured many artistic talents as well as enriched our lives. The government has formulated a strategy to promote traditional culture and arts and will work closely with the community to strengthen traditional arts. The Chinese community values the cultural heritage and hopes that our younger generation will continue to appreciate traditional arts and preserve the cultural roots. This is also government's goal. Our society is changing rapidly. 
we have to work harder to preserve and promote traditional values such as respect for elders, sincerity, loyalty to country, a sense of gratitude. These values have lasting significance and help to strengthen social harmony and unity. Promoting traditional values is an important and long-term mission. I hope that the people and government can work together to foster a strong sense of culture and values. Thank you. Let me continue in English. Besides creating opportunities and improving the quality of life, it's also important to build strong communities for happiness. I once asked a friend, he's from Bhutan, for his views on happiness. And he cited a scholar from his country who said, and I quote, there's no such thing as personal happiness. Happiness is 100% relational. In other words, our happiness is linked to the people around us, our friends, our family, and our neighbours. And in fact, many studies show that personal happiness depends on our interactions with the people in the community. This is more important than other factors, like how much we earn or how educated we are. Unfortunately today, despite emails and social media, we somehow feel less connected socially. It is a paradox of modern living, not just in Singapore, but also in cities around the world. I'm sure many of us can relate to this. When I was growing up, I remember the strong bonds between neighbours in our HDB estate. When, when, when one was in trouble, the others would pitch in to help. Once, when my family was locked out of our house, our neighbours all rallied to our side. They brought spare keys to try and open the door, and a huge saw to cut through our padlock. One brave man even offered to climb through our balcony window to help us get in. And I should tell you that we lived on the 21st floor. <laughs> so who says Singaporeans are kiasi? <laughs> Today, you can still see neighbours greeting and helping one another in the HDB estates but many feel that we have somehow lost a bit of the kampong spirit. So one of my priorities at MCCY is to strengthen community bonds and to widen and deepen the linkages among our people. We want to encourage Singaporeans to come forward for a shared purpose. Our role will be to empower, facilitate and support initiatives from the ground. So if there's something you want to do for the community, if you need resources and information, we will do our best to support you. I've talked about the pledge, the ideals in the pledge, and what the government can and will do to realise these ideals. But the most important factor is not the government. Rather, it is us, we the people. We, the citizens of Singapore. In the last few decades, we have achieved much. But these achievements have not been built on the back of one individual or even one community. They have been achieved through our collective efforts. So whatever our race, language or religion, we must continue to work together to overcome the challenges ahead, achieve our goals, and build a stronger Singapore. I feel a sense of optimism whenever I meet and talk to young Singaporeans. Many are actively involved in civic causes and community projects. Like the group of young Singaporeans who felt that more needed to be done about graciousness on public transport. So they got together and they started a movement called Stand Up For Our Singapore. You can see them here, all 300 of them mobilising. They travelled from train to train, they distributed badges and flyers, and they encouraged commuters to give up their seats to those who needed it more. 
And there are many others like that who go out to help the aged, the handicapped and the less fortunate or who have set up their own organisations to advance causes they feel strongly about. And perhaps there's a lesson to be drawn from all this. And that is, happiness lies in our hands. We can choose to be happy when we reach out to others, when we do something worthwhile, when we serve a higher calling and purpose. So let us all participate actively in shaping our nation's future and building the Singapore we want. This is the spirit that will bind us together in spite of our differences. This is the spirit that will make us strong and help us reach further and higher as a nation. For alone, we can do little, but together, there is little we cannot do. Let's all work to achieve happiness, prosperity and progress for our nation. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wong. May we now invite Minister of State, Ministry of Community Development, Youth and Sports, Madam Halima Yaakob. She will address us in Malay first, then in English. Madam Halima, please. Good evening. Selamat petang. Tachi Awan San Hao, Vanakam. Let me say a few words in Malay first before I proceed with my English speech. Tuan -tuan dan puan -puan, izinkan saya Ladies and gentlemen, allow me by dan selamat hari raya to start by saying Menteri. Happy National Day and Selamat Hari Raya. Berkekalkan modal yang dinamakan tekad. Bestowed with virtues Bersama like perseverance, working together and hard work, our Malay Muslim community has made substantial progress in line with national prosperity. Many of our Malay children have achieved success in the area of education. Many of us in the community have also attained good jobs and income. For example, the achievement by Adil Hakim Muhammad Rafi, who is the recipient of the President's Scholarship, which is the highest scholarship in the country, proves that our community is just as educated, talented and capable as anyone else. Adil's success also demonstrates how Malay Muslim children are more confident in attaining a higher level of success in their respective fields. Yet, as our society moves forward, the world is rapidly changing as well. This change is driven by technological advances and intense competition among countries. These global changes also affect Singapore and consequently our community. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we need to prepare and motivate ourselves to greater heights in the three Ps, that is education, employment and communication or relationship in the family. The fact is we are a modern and progressive community. However, we have not yet fulfilled our true potential. The truth is, our community has many strengths. For example, as a society, we are highly creative, which sectors like IT, communications and fashion need. You would be familiar with the fashion designer, Ashley Isham. He is a well-known designer in London. Ashley provides luxury clothes for many famous women, proving 
that we are able to compete internationally. Another asset of our community is that we have a lot of young energy. We must attract and develop the potential of our youth. Why? Because they can play a more important role in building our community. In conclusion, to move forward, all parties in society need to have determination, passion and commitment to empower our community's identity. We need to give full attention and do not be wary of working hard for the common good of all. Ladies and gentlemen, I am confident under the system of meritocracy and capitalizing on our hard work, the Malay Muslim community will be able to climb the ladder of success even higher. Thank you. Fellow Singaporeans, every year on National Day, I ask myself what it means to be a Singaporean. Is this a place where we only recognize the successful and the rich, or do we give opportunities for every man and every woman? Do we give people second chances, or do we write them off as failures just because they take the road less traveled? Singapore has not departed from the principles upon which it was founded. It continues to give opportunities to everyone, provided they are prepared to work hard. Take Ms. Chong Hui Sien, my resident in Bukit Batok East, who studied at a neighborhood school, the Yusuf Ishaq Secondary School. She had scored only 151 points for her PSLE and was posted to the normal technical stream. She then proceeded to ITE College East and then to Ngi An Polytechnic. She did well, won prestigious awards, and got into NTU to do accountancy. In her third year at NTU now, she will soon be starting lessons at Sean Hoping University in Sweden on a five-month attachment program. Hui Xian has been actively involved in community service so as to give back to society. I am indeed very proud of Hui Xian. Fellow Singaporeans, we were poor when we became independent in 1965. Many of us remember the muddy roads, the rickety buses, we used to call them bone shakers, and the ch chalky blackboards in the classroom. After independence, Singapore did many things that others had not even dreamt of doing. We welcome foreign in investments. For instance, while others shunned them for nationalist reasons, we dreamt big. We gave people hope. We built a remarkable society. Still, 47 years since independence, we face many challenges. We have to continue dreaming big, give people hope, build an even more inclusive and remarkable society. We have to ensure that a widening income gap does not make it harder for able but poor people to do well. The Prime Minister in his National Day message spoke of a fair and just society with opportunities for all an inclusive society with a heart. Our meritocratic system must provide opportunities for all, regardless of their background, to pursue their dreams. Every Singaporean must get the proper education and training to succeed. Every talent, not just the purely academic, must be nurtured. We must also help those who, due to personal circumstances, or through no fault of their own, are unable to help themselves. Maintaining social mobility in a mature economy will be a challenge. But we must persevere to help low-income families. 
Failure to do so will lead to social segregation and instability. Once on a public holiday, I took a taxi to an event. The taxi driver told me that his goal was to make sure that his two sons got into university because he wanted them to have a better life. He worked hard and he spent a significant portion of his income that he shared with me to provide tuition to his two sons. He had missed the boat himself, but was determined that his sons would not. In the year I have been at MCYS, I have visited many VWOs. I have been inspired by their dedication. They have kept hope alive among the most disadvantaged of families. I have met many of the families too, and I am inspired by their tenacity. We tend to think the needy are helpless and we must help to solve all their problems. We are wrong. Sometimes we can do more harm than good by not respecting their desire for dignity. For example, I know an old lady who collects old newspapers in my constituency. I had asked my RC umpteen times to ask her whether she needed financial help, and her answer was always no. I had personally asked her also, Auntie, would you need some help? Of course, in the you know, colloquial Malay language and a little bit of uh, you know, Hokkien. And her answer was still an emphatic no. I have learned to respect her wishes and her desire for pride and control over her own life. But for those who need help, we are committed to doing more for them. We will continue to improve our approaches for not all are able to access the opportunities available. Some families need dedicated support and intervention. We are putting in more resources to strengthen our social services sector. But the government cannot walk alone in doing this. It needs to partner social service agencies to better understand the needs of poor families and develop relevant services for them. We also need community support, particularly among our youth. You may have heard of Food Bank Singapore, a not-for-profit organization started by a brother and sister team, uh, 33-year-old Nicholas and 34-year-old Nicole Ng. Food Bank links people in need with companies and individuals with excess food to give away. Caring Singaporeans looking out for one another is the most powerful individual expression of the values of our nation. Let me conclude, fellow Singaporeans, by sharing with you the story of 27-year-old Norul Shika Muhammad Taha. Norul was born with spinal muscular atrophy, and she is one of our Paralympians. She is one of the best boccia players in the world. In case you're wondering what is boccia, boccia is a form of a lawn bowling. She has won several awards, including coming in first at the 2011 National Disability League. Norul has also excelled in her studies. She studied at Raffles Girls School, and then she went on to National Junior College, graduating with a Bachelor of Accountancy degree from SMU. She's now working in IRAS. Norul and Huixian represent the true Singapore spirit that we must value, nurture, and grow. Fellow Singaporeans, we have a compelling vision to build a democratic society based on justice and equality, as our pledge says. But to better achieve this vision, everyone has to play a part. None of us is a passive bystander. None of us can be a mere spectator. We are all co-creators of our common future. Thank you. Let me wish everyone a very happy National Day. Selamat Hari Kebangsaan. Kuaching Chie Kuaila. Desia.
Desia, Desia Dinal Waltakal. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Halima. Minister for Education, Mr. Heng Sui Kiet, will address us now. Mr. Heng will be speaking in Mandarin and then English. May we invite the minister on stage now. Dear fellow Singaporeans, it is an honour for me to say a few words this evening. Let me start in Mandarin. My fellow citizens, good evening. Recently, I went to several school anniversary celebrations. These schools have long histories. Some are over 100 years old. There is a Chinese saying, it takes 10 years to grow trees, 100 years to nurture people. This shows that nursery talent takes time and commitment. Of course, building a nation requires even more time and effort. We are a young nation. Although there will be new challenges ahead, our people with diverse hopes and aspirations, but I deeply believe that if we work together and make the right choice in developing the right plans for social development, we will have a bright future. Educators seek to inculcate morals, knowledge, physical health, social skills, artistic sense. These aspects help us achieve balance and holistic development of our children. Similarly, we should pursue balanced development in these five areas for our Singapore community in order to build a strong society. In achieving economic growth, we have to care for the weak and vulnerable members of our society so that we will ensure Singapore will remain our kindest and best unique home. In the next few months, we will engage all Singaporeans in a national conversation. We will listen patiently to their wishes and aspirations. I'd like to urge everyone to help us and to take part in this national conversation. Thank you. Many people have asked me what it is like to be Education Minister. Let me share a story. Last June, a few days after I became minister, a parent wrote to me, angry that his son was given homework during the school holiday. <laughs> then another was upset that his son was not given homework. <laughs> One wanted his son to excel to get ahead, the other to relax and enjoy the vacation. So, it's not easy to be Education Minister, <laughs> but I'll do my best. Earlier this year, I had breakfast with a group of students at King Cheng School. I asked what their hopes and dreams were. Indeed, each time I, I meet students, I ask this question. Our young have big and interesting dreams. They want to have jobs that I have never heard of before, such as character directors and texture artists in the animation industry. They want to create the next Star Wars. I met a group of NUS students on an entrepreneurship program in Beijing. They were awed by the vast market and wanted to create the next big thing in China. I'm also very heartened to have met many people, young and old, who volunteer their time to make life better for others. But I also have my concerns. An elderly resident, Mr. Lim, urged me, 
Mr. Heng, we will need an elder care facility here. We'll need it later, but please build it now before too many people object. <laughs> His concerns were not misplaced. A young man actually asked me to relocate an entire school because it was too noisy. So some of these encounters make me worry. Some lifts my spirit. But each raises an important question about our future. In the fight for space, will our elderly be pushed out? Will our young succeed here or will they have to emigrate? Will our citizens seek to contribute or will they just advance their own interests? When I was young, most Singaporeans were poor. Our goal was to have food on the table. It was simply about survival. Today, Singaporeans have diverse needs and wants. Many have more choices, and only a deep sense of belonging will anchor them here. We each seek to have more space, but we are a small island. So how do we achieve a consensus turn diversity into strength, harness our idealism, and make the right choices together. We need a national conversation about our Singapore. This national conversation will first and foremost be about putting Singaporeans at the heart of our concerns. It will be an opportunity for Singaporeans to come together and ask what matters most? Where do we want to go as a country, as a people? Many Singaporeans have since shared their views, and I find them inspiring. I recently had a dialogue with a group of students. They want a caring and gracious Singapore. One student, Jolene, puts it well. She wants a gracious Singapore where we no longer need signs on MRT trains telling us to give up our seats for the elderly, because it is instinctively Singaporean to do so. And she adds, when it rains, we share our umbrellas with anyone spontaneously. In the conversation about our Singapore, we'll need to reaffirm, recalibrate, and refresh. First, reaffirm what is good and still relevant, especially where the fundamentals are concerned. As one resident told me, hey, Mr. Heng, change when we have to change, but please don't change for the sake of change. I fully agree. Our society must be anchored by core values and a constancy of purpose. Second, we must ask ourselves what has changed and recalibrate accordingly. As in sailing, we may have set off in the right direction. But when the winds change, we need to adjust our course. For instance, we do have great strength in some areas, but strength overdone can become weaknesses. Our focus on grades and achievements do help maintain standards, but overdone comes at the expense of a holistic education, a happier childhood, and quality time with parents. Extreme meritocracy and competition can lead to a winner-take-all society where the winners think little of others. We need to restore a balance to the hard-nosed material pragmatism. As Gandhi put it, we must not have commerce without morality, science without humanity, and knowledge without character. Third, we must refresh and innovate. Look afresh at developments and new evidence and be bold in charting new direction. 
Over the years, MOE has been studying the impact of preschool. Our more recent evaluation show that preschool years are important for children to learn languages and social skills. We must invest more in preschool, and PM will touch on this later. The national conversation that we will, be, will, that we will have will be as inclusive as possible. We will engage Singaporeans from all walks of life through multiple channels. We will seek out the views of as many people as possible, including those who normally stay silent. All of you have stayed very silent since I started speaking. <laughs> Thank you very much, but please speak up later. <laughs> this will allow us to better appreciate each other's concerns, hopes and aspirations. Our conversation must be grounded in reason, mutual respect and an attitude of give and take. Singapore has succeeded so far because our own personal stories have been woven into the big Singapore story in a rich and coherent tapestry. As Mr. Kong Yu Kin put on my Facebook recently, and I quote, it will be great to have a collage of the dream boards of every Singaporean which will make up the Singapore dream. Indeed, when we pursue a common purpose, our individual dreams come alive. When an individual succeeds, the rest of us benefit from that success. My fellow Singaporeans, we have an exciting journey ahead. I urge you to take part in this national conversation about our Singapore. Together, we can make Singapore our home. A home of hope, a home of heart, a home we all love. Thank you very much. Minister Lee Hsien Lung will be delivering his Malay, Mandarin and English speeches at 8pm. Stay tuned to Channel 5.